Hi there, I'm Yaakov Verdi, president of eLearnIt, member of Team Sybase, and certified Sybase Powerball developer and instructor. For months now, I've been talking about application partitioning as a way of future-proofing your Powerball decode investment. Whether you're going to migrate to the web or to .NET, application partitioning is a crucial preparatory step. Recently, I've gotten many requests to clarify what application partitioning is all about. Here's one such request that came in an email. We're an ISV, and we have a large application that's currently in the Power Boulder 12 classic platform. We're considering migrating to Power Boulder 12.net. One thing that you mention, and mention often in your articles, is the concept of separating business logic from presentation. This is a stumbling block for me. The phrase is bandied about with the assumption that everyone knows what it means. I have to admit, I don't. Have you written or do you know of a good article or presentation on what exactly it means and how you would go about doing it? For example, here's some starting code. Here's what's wrong with it. And here's an example of what you do to prepare it for the future and correct the problem. I'm so glad you asked. That question was really right on. In this video, I'll walk you through an application that was built without partitioning. I'll show you the concerns and issues and then I'll take you through the partitioning process step by step, concentrating on a final, clean, and migratable result. Ready? Let's go! This presentation has three sections. In the first section, I'll walk through the existing non-partitioned benchmark application and show you its code. Then we'll step through partitioning the code. Then lastly, we'll migrate up to WPF and we'll turn the partition logic into an assembly that we'll reference and call from within the main GUI application. First, let me tell you a few words about Benchmark. It's the sample application that's been shipping with Power Builder since version 5. It's used to test the speed of Power Builder in various deployment architectures in the IDE, P-Code, Machine Code, and in .NET. When we run the app, I'll show you the features. It's got a basic GUI. When you click these buttons, they run the individual tests. They're both labels and buttons. If you want to run all the tests, you click the Run All button, and it runs all the tests. If you want to make a report, first thing you want to do is identify the machine you ran it on. You click the Set Machine ID, it opens up a little window. There it is, and you can set the characteristics of the machine. Those things are written into the registry. Then you can save the re report results into the registry. This application uses the registry as a database, and only one row is stored, the results of one test. So you'll need to run the report after every test in order to have a correct printout. Only one set of test results is stored in the registry, so therefore you'll need to run the report after each and every test. So let's go ahead now and run a report. Basically, this is a, a data window object that is populated manually by calls to the registry to get the information that was stored there. And then you can print it and save as, or you can close as we're going to do. That's basically the application. Now let's take a look at the code. All the code objects are inside one library. The central window here is WBenchmark, and in WBenchmark, each and every test is composed of a declaration section, followed by a GUI validation section, followed by the business logic of doing the test. So if we will navigate now to another test, CB TAC, variable declarations, GUI validation, and then the logic of doing the test. So we have here a combination of GUI logic, which is input validation, together with business logic, which is the actual performance of the test. Over in the report window, which is W report, in the open event, it goes ahead and it interacts with the registry, and then it does some GUI logic, and then it interacts with the registry some more. And then, in order to actually show the data in the report, it posts to an event called get data that then calls the registry, makes all these data access calls directly from within this GUI event. So here we have a combination of GUI code, which is uh, putting things into the data window object, or the data, con data window control, if you please, uh, and also accessing the, the registry, which is like the pseudo database, all jumbled all together. The goal of the exercise is to separate out the data logic from the GUI logic and the business logic from the GUI logic and then make the GUI logic a little cleaner and a little neater so it's easier to maintain. In this section, I'll just walk you through my partitioned code. First thing I want you to note is that now there are three libraries. There's the main library, which existed from before. 
but it's got many fewer objects in it. In fact, now it's just the objects that are required for the GUI itself. There is the data access layer, which has inside of it a custom class user object, which manages the registry. And then there's the business object library, which has inside of it a custom class user object that manages all the tests together with the supporting code necessary for all the tests. Now, let me just show you the pattern inside the GUI itself. Here is the benchmark window. We take a look at the code for any of the tests, and you'll note that now each test only is comprised of two calls. A call to validate the ed entry, and then another call into the business layer to actually perform the test. This is the loop test. Let's just find another test. Here's the TAC test. Same pattern, validate the entry, and then perform the test. So I've pulled everything out of the command buttons, except the calls, because the command button is meant to be a redirector only, not to perform any other type of logic. Here's the code for the get test, etc. and so forth. Looking at the function list, here's the code that's, we pass in an edit mask, and then we'll validate the contents of the edit mask. So this is the same validate method that's called for each and every one of the tests. I added a couple of instance variables, one that holds the reference to the tests object and one that holds the reference to the registry object. And we do the instantiation in the post open. Looking at the code for the tests object, we can see a list of functions here. One function for each one of the tests that was prior to this inside the GUI has now been moved into this test object, which is now the business object. The main job over here was properly refactoring to the code to make sure that I didn't break anything as I was moving things about to be in their proper place. The other pieces here in the business object library are just those supportive data windows that are used for some of the tests are now associated with data stores as well as one global function. In the data access layer I have this custom class user object that manages the access to the registry and there's a set of methods here which wraps the call to uh, manage the registry as well as all of the gets and sets etc. and so forth having pulled and I pulled all of this code out of the GUI class as well. And if you take a look at the report window now everything that was embedded in here before is now replaced by a call to the registry object that manages the data access layer. Same thing also this other event this UE get data event that before uh, made all those calls to the registry now has a single call into it that is redirected to the registry object and that returns the data for the report and then we do the import string. So we've simplified the code, the structure is very clear now and everything is put into its own little cubbyhole box so maintenance is easy to do and now the application is partitioned and ready for migration to .NET. We've migrated to over to the .NET IDE and we've come to the ultimate purpose of our migration and that is to split out the business logic and the data logic into a separate assembly that's independent of the GUI application and is shareable across multiple applications. As you can see here from the Solution Explorer, there are actually two different targets. One of them is the BM assembly and inside this BM assembly I put the registry object and the test object together with all their supportive classes. And then I went ahead and I added them as a reference, or I actually added it, that assembly as a reference to my GUI app, changed a couple of references, and uh, we were off and running. Just to make this thing more WPF-like, I also went ahead and I enhanced the user interface and added some third-party controls to it. Let me run this thing for you right now. Ta-da! Here's the new UI. There are the individual tests. There's the clock that shows me the result of running all the tests. And I'll go ahead and I'll run all the tests now. There's the total time. And I can go ahead now and see the, the individual tests. So I was able to enhance the UI because I moved over to WPF. But more importantly, I now have standalone business logic that is maintainable separate from the main app. There were some issues that I had to overcome because of the a .NET compatibility. In other words, uh, you can't pass Powerball to types back and forth. And um, so, so some of those specifics are covered in more detail in my December 2010 article that's published in the ISOG journal. This concludes the presentation.